Hello, thanks for being in a new video. This time I have a review of the Realme Buds Air 6 Pro. Let's get started. Uh, these headphones could be considered Realme's high-end headphones, although they still lack some of the other features that a high-end headphone series should have. However, their price is a bit more in line with what we could find in lower mid-range headphones. In Mexico, they have been announced at a price of 1,399 pesos. You can even find it a little cheaper, so it definitely becomes an interesting option for those looking to buy good quality headphones without having to spend so much money. So, join me to know them. Let's start with the design section, where we will find two colors available. This edition I have in my hands is called Twilight Black, although I personally think it looks a bit more brown than black. In fact, the headphones themselves are also in a bit of an odd shade. Honestly, I didn't really like the color. Although they are also available in silver blue color, but it's less common to find them in that option. Perhaps the color is one of the few things I dislike about these headphones. Overall, I didn't like the design. The case is extremely reflective and you know I don't normally like such a reflective finish. I would prefer a more satin or matte design, but that's a matter of personal taste. And while we're on the subject of the case, we'll find an LED on the outside. It doesn't have any kind of LED on the inside, but we're also going to find an easy link button on the right side, something I really like. On the other hand, on the bottom will be the USB-C port, which will be the only way to charge these headphones since they don't have wireless charging. So, si tayano desees taas. And once we open the case, the truth is that we can appreciate that they have a good magnetic absorption. As you can see, it will be hard for the earbuds to accidentally fall out. They are a little slippery, but nothing really serious. I think it is very easy to take them out of the case. And that is something that is appreciated because suddenly there are some manufacturers that, for some strange reason, make it very complicated to both remove and store the headphones. But in this case, it's a pretty straightforward activity. So let's focus now on headphones that have a tube format design. In fact, it's a fairly round tube, also with a very reflective finish. And obviously, we are talking about headphones with a closed fit. That is, they have ear cushions. In the box, obviously, will come a smaller size ear tip and a larger size ear tip for you to select the one that fits you best. In fact, through their mobile app, they have a tool that, through the emission of certain sounds, will try to identify if it is the pad that best fits you or if you should change it. In my case, the medium ear cushion, as a rule, always fits me well in all the headphones I try and this is no exception, so it was very easy and it is appreciated that this option is in the app. The headphones will also have a usage sensor that, in fact, you can also disable through the app in case you don't want the music to pause when you remove one of the headphones. Personally, I like like this behavior, so I leave the option enabled, but it is always nice to give the user a choice. We will also find the IP55 level of resistance against water and dust, but only on the headphones. That is, the case does not have that level of resistance, so you have to be careful, but you can use the headphones while you are exercising or something similar. And while we're on the subject, note that the headphones have a really very good fit. Even if I'm moving around a lot, I haven't felt like the headphones are constantly falling out or getting out of adjustment. In that sense, I think the experience has been very positive, at least from my point of view. Because you know that this can vary a lot depending on the shape of the ear, but at least among all the hearing aids I have tried, these do have a good fit. And in this case, through their app, there's no tool to make it ring or to find it if you happen to drop a hearing aid. But if you have a Realme device in the Bluetooth settings, specifically entering these headphones, there is that option to ring the headphones. So it's a little bit strange. If you don't have a Realme, the button doesn't appear in the app. And if you do have a Realme, outside of the app there is that option. Something that I consider a little inconsistent. Hopefully they can fix it with an update. Now let's talk about the controls that we can have on these headphones because they have a touch panel on the top of the outer tube. So that's where you're going to be able to do touches. It only supports touches, it doesn't support swipes. So it's not that advanced in that sense. Although fortunately through the app we can configure the controls and we can also individually configure the left earpiece and the right earpiece. So it gives you a little more versatility, but it's clear that by only supporting touches, it has a much narrower range of options. And if you also consider that it doesn't support the one-touch gesture, this range of options is further reduced. So by default, with two taps, you can play or pause the content. And in the additional options, you can choose whether you want to go to the next song, activate the voice assistant, or disable this gesture. 
With three taps on any of the headphones by default is to go to the next song. Although through the app you can customize it so that you can go to the previous song, turn up the volume, turn down the volume, access the voice assistant, activate game mode or disable the gesture. And finally, by pressing and holding on this panel, you can enable or disable noise cancellation. Or also through the application, you can customize whether you want to open the assistant, activate the game mode, or completely disable the option. So although it does offer you several options to configure, you can't really have so many options enabled at the same time. So in the controls, you are a bit more limited than I would like. And in that sense, the experience does fall a little short, although according to the price. Now it's time to talk about the sound quality they are able to give us. And in this sense, we will definitely find their strongest point. They are headphones that have a very well-defined sound of excellent quality. The bass frequencies are very well present. The treble is also well defined. I liked absolutely everything about the sound in these headphones. And that may be because they have dual drivers. So one diaphragm is 11 millimeters and the other is 6 millimeters. The 11 millimeter is focused on projecting the bass and the 6 millimeter is focused on projecting the treble. So the frequencies can come out a little cleaner in this sense. And the manufacturer also ensures that it has used six pieces of magnets to also have a much better distribution. All this projects the sound and therefore the sound can come out cleaner. The officially reported response is 20 Hz to 40 kHz. So it has a little bit higher range in the high frequencies. Obviously, beyond 20 kHz, our ears don't have the ability to distinguish it. But as I tell you, whenever the limit is extended a little bit more, it will certainly cause also the higher frequencies to have a little bit more power at the time of sounding. So overall, as I say, I really like the sound. Also consider that they support the SBC codec, also AAC, and the most important LDAC. Through the LDAC codec will be where you can enjoy the highest quality sound. Although this obviously must be supported by your cell phone. If your cell phone does not support LDAC, you will not have this option available. But if you do have a cell phone with this option, in the application settings, you will see the option to turn on this higher resolution codec because by default it is turned off. In fact, by default, it is curious that the equalizer that is selected is the one called Pure Bass. And in that preset, I perceived the sound a bit more bass than I would like. In fact, that was my first impression. I thought that the headphones did not have such well-defined treble. But when I entered the equalizer, I realized that I actually had some sort of bass boost on. I then enabled the original sound equalization preset. And that preset is where I enjoyed the sound of these headphones the most, I like them a lot. There are also other EQ presets like Serenade which brings out the vocals and still a higher bass mode called Bass Boost. But that mode will definitely boost the bass to a very high level. If you like very strong bass, they can definitely give you a good response to the headphones as well. In fact, that's what I liked, that through the equalization, you can achieve a sound very much to your liking. In my case, I like the original sound setting, but you can also access a six band custom EQ and you can create different presets. So the experience is very good. In fact, outside of the equalizer, you also have another dynamic bass setting, which in my case, I turned it up two levels and that was my perfect setting. Although obviously it's up to each user which setting they like best, but this dynamic bass option allows you to increase the bass only when the song deserves it. So not all the time, the bass is going to be overshadowing the treble a little bit. And that's why I like this option. And interestingly, if you have these headphones connected to a Realme device, an additional option will appear in their app that allows you to access all reality audio, which is sort of like Dolby Atmos with some different surround presets and also a 10 band equalizer. So if you have a Realme, you can take advantage of more equalization features. It also has a feature called Golden Sound, which is kind of like a wizard where it's going to give you some tests and some tests, so you with a slider simply define at what point you stop hearing a little beep, that the headphones are projecting with different frequencies. And once you adjust all this, the application is able to create a profile specifically of how you hear to improve your hearing. So in that sense also the experience is going to be very good. Ano tonsainen. 
It also has a feature called audio spatial that will amplify the stereo. That is to say, the sound sounds even more distributed on the left and the right, so they want you to stop experiencing only left and right, but that you can also have a sound that surrounds you, although obviously that depends on the individual, but it is very noticeable how the amplitude increases. De and finally, with regard to noise cancellation, we will also find something very positive. The manufacturer claims 50 decibels of noise cancellation, and in this case I do believe it because I really did experience a very good noise cancellation. In fact, it has different modes. You can have the intelligent mode that will automatically detect the noise to modify the intensity of the cancellation. That will be the recommended mode if you want to save battery life. But if you want maximum noise cancellation at all times, you can also enable the maximum mode. That will obviously consume a little more battery. Moderate mode is also available. Or you can also disable noise cancellation completely. Or you can also enter the attention mode, with which you will hear through the microphones what is happening around you. And in this case, I like that it has an option to amplify and clarify the voices that are around you, as well as reducing wind noise. So overall, the experience with these headphones in everything that has to do with sound and noise cancellation is very good. These headphones have three microphones each. So all six microphones can be used simultaneously when you are capturing your voice for calls. They obviously have noise cancellation for the microphones so that your voice can be heard well. In this case, I am in a very quiet environment. But anyway, we listened to a test recorded with the microphones on these headphones. Una prueba de audio captada con los micrófonos integrados de estos audífonos Realme Buds Air 6 Pro. Obviously, it won't be studio audio or anything like that, but for calls, it seems to me that it can give you good quality. Regarding the battery, I personally have never experienced anything bad in headphones of this style. I think it all depends on the type of user you are, but at least from my type of user, I have not had any bad experience. Through the app, you can see the current battery status of both the headphones and the case. With noise cancellation turned off, the manufacturer promises 10 hours of playback just considering the headphones, and it goes up to 40 hours considering the case. While with noise cancellation turned on, the battery lifetime is reduced a bit to seven and a half hours with headphones only, and up to 28 hours considering the case. I think that's a good enough time. Consider that they have fast charging, so with 10 minutes of charging, the manufacturer promises seven hours of playback, and full charge finishes it in about two hours. On the other hand, if the headphones were completely discharged out of the case and you're going to put them away, it takes about 50 minutes to fully charge them again. I think the experience is good here. Finally, let's talk about the connection. In this case, they incorporate Bluetooth 5.3, so they offer good stability, good range, and they also have Google Fast Pair. So just by opening the case, you can easily pair them to any Android device. In fact, also with the repair button, you can re-enable this to bring up this easy connection window. Although personally on that, I have had some bad experience because I tried to connect it to two devices, and on neither of them, the connection through Google Fast Pair was completed. On both, a dialog box came up telling me to set it up manually. Manually. So even though it has Google Fast Pair, I couldn't actually take advantage of Google Fast Pair and had to go to the Bluetooth settings as if it were a simpler headset. They don't integrate Microsoft Swift Pair, so on Windows computers it will have to be a manual pairing as well. But through their app, if you can have a feature to keep you connected to two devices at the same time, which can be your computer and your cell phone or your tablet and your cell phone. And with respect to latency, there is something very curious because the manufacturer claims to have latency of something that would be very spectacular. But in practical life, I tested it on a Samsung device and on a Realme device and in neither of them I had a spectacular latency. In fact, doing some testing, I concluded that it has roughly about 300 milliseconds of latency, which is very different from the figure shared by the manufacturer. So possibly to achieve 55 milliseconds of latency, you must have some very specific Realme device. Maybe a high-end one with the most current version of the software or something similar. But in reality, latency in practical life is not that surprising. Let's listen to a test to find out for yourself. And finally, as an additional option on Realme devices within the Bluetooth settings of these headphones, an option also appears for you to use the touchpad as a camera shutter. So it can be useful for taking pictures remotely. But as I tell you, this feature is exclusive for when you have a Realme device. For now, we have come to the end of this video. Personally, I really liked it in terms of the sound it is able to give us. Although I hope they still improve some little things through updates. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you know you can tell me about it and see you next time. Bye.